it's past 6 30. <laughs> we, <laughs> we will call the meeting to order Kern Council Government's Transportation Planning Policy Committee Thursday May 16th 2024 we'll start with Pledge of Allegiance please stand salute pledge Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Test. Let's see blades on here. Blades. Or Skip Gorman. Either one. Couch. Here. Crichton. Here. Crump. Here. Flores. Here. Carr. Here. Cryer. Here. Navarro. Here. Para. Perez. Here. Prout. Here. Reyes. Present. Garcia. Present. Bob Smith. I'm here. Phil Smith. Present. Vasquez and Warney. Thank you. Thank you. Our new member from Arvin is Susanna Reyes, and we welcome her. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Any public comments? <coughs> Seeing none, consent agenda opportunity for public comment. Same rules. Anybody have any public comments for the consent agenda? Seeing none. Does any member wish to pull any item off of the consent agenda for separate discussion? Motion to approve. Sorry. Roll call vote, please. Phil Smith. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Garcia. Aye. Prout. Aye. Perez. Aye. Navarro. Aye. Cryer. Yes. Flores. Yes. Crump. Yes. Crichton. Yes. And Couch. Yes. And the reason I didn't call Susanna Reyes is because I did I didn't put her address or anything on our agenda. So I marked her here, but she can't vote. Gotcha. Thank you. Item five, public review draft twenty twenty five Federal Transportation Improvement Program and corresponding draft air quality conformity analysis, Ms. Pacheco. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. A concurrent 30-day public review period is being held for the draft 2025 Federal Transportation Improvement Program and the draft air quality conformity analysis. All documents are posted on the KernCog website. Comments are due by 5 p.m. May 31st. Public comments received will be incorporated as appropriate into the final document scheduled for consideration and adoption at the July 18th board meeting. At this time, I ask the chair to please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Thank you. With that, I will open the public hearing. Is there any public comment? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Caltrans report, District 9. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> good evening. Uh, to begin with, I'll start with the uh, upcoming project status and information. New project work. 
there is current digouts and slab replacements. The construction is tentatively scheduled to begin June 3rd for this project and uh, the replacements will occur at various locations on State Route 58 from just east of Bealeville Road to the San Bernardino County line, so pretty well the whole section of uh, 58 in District 9. And it will start uh, the very beginning of June and it will last most of the month. The second new project is the Kern Lighting and uh, construction is uh, tentatively scheduled to begin June 5th for this project and it will update lighting uh, on 58 at the Tehachapi Boulevard overpass. And again, this will start on June 5th and again, it'll be most of the month. Uh, the Kern Pedestrian Safety Project uh, construction is uh, tentatively scheduled to begin June 15 for this project and it will replace crosswalks and install retroflective backplates on signal heads at the intersection of State Route 14 and Business Route 58 in Mojave and State Route 178 from French Avenue to Richmond Road in Ridgecrest. So both Mojave and Ridgecrest are impacted with that project. Then, oh, what's happening here? Okay, and it will, uh, to finish that project, will start mid-June and end uh, mid-August, so it'll be two months long. We, let's see, the uh, general information, Clean California, we're having, uh, District 9 is having a tile re tire recycling event on both May 4th and June 8th. Uh, there's more information on our website to find out what locations on both dates, but uh, there'll be, Part of this uh, event will include Ridgecrest, Boron, Mojave Rosamond, and the Tehachapi landfills. Uh, we also uh, planning, District 9 planning, recently met with Jay Schlosser uh, to get for a kickoff meeting for the, um, the PID the, to start the uh, project study report for the 58 in Tehachapi Boulevard operational improvements. So we're excited by that. Uh, also, I don't know if you're going to talk about this, but I got to it first. Uh, Clean California has released an interactive map that spotlights hundreds of beautification projects funded by Clean California. And I will put the, um, I'll put the link in the chat, but I looked on the map, it's really nice. It, there's about 319 projects for the whole state. And in East Kern, ooh, there's the Tehachapi Valley Boulevard Recreational Park, Ridgecrest, there's the Leroy, 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 Jackson Sports Complex Improvements. Also in your in your Kern, the, tran the uh, Transit Transfer Hub and the Rosamond Interchange. Both of those two projects were uh, zero escaping. Uh, there's a call for projects, just to remind you, Cycle 7 ATP grants opened, uh, they, uh, there's still a call, it's, they opened the, the grant application in uh, late March, and uh, again, the deadline for applications is June 17th, so you better be working on those grants. Uh, finally, oh, just a heads up, uh, for those that uh, submitted letters of support for, to District 9 for a Protect 2% grant application, it, we applied to fund a Greater Tehachapi Area Evacuation Model and Evacuation Plan, and it was, to, heads up, it was well received by, by Caltrans headquarters, but they are currently doing their own study on the state highways for evacuation capacity for all the highways. And that will be finished well, probably the end of summer, and then we are uh, invited to reapply uh, with the new information from the state study to augment our application. So we will continue with that. And that is all, apart from links that I will add to the, uh, the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments or questions for District 9? District 9 is District 9. Right? Yeah. Yes, except I'm on uh, yeah. the attached be region. Yes. Uh, yeah. um, the lighting project over the, that you mentioned earlier yes. on, what was that going to be? It's, um, it's going to, uh, the scope or, or when is it going to? It's going to start approximately June 5th, and it's scheduled for 20 working days, so. Is it like 
overhead lighting yes, over the overpass? it's a light it's with the lighting that's currently there and they're replacing if you'd like more information i can get that to you okay that good we'll, all right thank I'll you i'll do that thank you any other questions thank you mr navarro thank you chair and good evening everyone um just want to put a quick plug in for May being bike month as you're probably aware and just kind of share Caltrans we had our bike to work event today we had a little over 30 riders riding to work including myself so about 13 mile ride for me which I'm pretty proud of it <laughs> the shape I'm yeah. in right now but um it was, it was a great event we had a long bike train like I said about over 30 people so raised bicycle awareness so good event hopefully there's more events going on throughout the month of May and even continue beyond May um for clean California so we're proud that all of our Clean California projects are in the process of either being advertised or getting ready to be awarded. Uh, the State Route 204 Road Diet Project, so that was awarded to Granite Construction. Additional funds were approved. As I mentioned, that came in over the engineer's estimate, and we're doing some of the work ourselves. So right now, we'll probably you'll probably start seeing more visible construction activities this summer as they start. Um, they're in the process of getting some of the artwork approved currently, um, so that has been awarded and construction's technically starting. You probably saw Garcia Circle. There's work that's already started there for that project. Um, they're also going through the process of getting artwork approved through Caltrans Legal. Uh, the McFarland Delano project is ongoing. They're about 50% complete. Um, art is also being reviewed for approval. And then uh, for 99 California Avenue project that was awarded to PK Construction, the construction activities began on May, May 2nd and also going through the process of getting some of the artwork approved. So happy to share that. Um, Catherine already talked about ATP Cycle 7, but I want to share Cycle 12 of uh, HSIP, which is Highway Safety Improvement Program, so for agencies that are looking for safety enhancements. Um, that call went out earlier this month. Applications are due September 9th, so if there's anything you're envisioning along the, you know, the state highway system and we'd like to plan or coordinate, please let me know. There's about three, they're estimating about $300 million available. And on May 21st, Caltrans and Federal Highways will be holding a webinar. We, we've sent that to your respective staff, so they should be aware. Uh, the State Route 99 uh, Comprehensive Multimodal Corridor Plan continues work. We're kicking off our engagement activities this month. So the, the virtual uh, community workshop we'll be doing for Kern County is scheduled for June 6th. So we're starting to see flyers go out for that, notifying the public, so <coughs> encouraging participation in that. And then as for projects, so um, stay route 99, southbound 99 to westbound 58 connector ramp. Um, the ps &E or design allocation request was submitted for the June CTC meeting. Um, that's the project where we've collaborated with Kern Cog on a raise application back in February as well as the infant grant was submitted in May. The um, old US 99 to White Line, stay route 99 rehab project, products uh, Wrapping up construction, we expect to have the road work complete uh, June of this year yeah, and going into plan establishment after that. The uh, Santa Fe roundabout and chapter, so it's, it's in the design phase. We expect to have design wrapped up by June 15th, our target date, and then we'll be working on uh, securing permits from the Bureau of Reclamation. So construction of that project is, is still a couple years out. The State Route 46 segment 4C, uh, Construction is progressing. Um, scheduled completion is this summer, and we are uh, planning on having a ribbon cutting ceremony. So we have reached out to Lost Hill School District, which is the same location they had the groundbreaking. I think they're envisioning something probably mid-August for a, a ribbon cutting for that project. The California Aqueducts there at 166 Bridge Rehab Project uh, will be awarding the contract uh, for approval August of this year. There will be about a nine-month delayed start as a contractor pursues encroachment permits from uh, DWR. So we're looking at probably a, a spring of a 2025 construction start date. Uh, the Maripo Maricopa Highway uh, pavement rehab project, that was awarded to Griffith Construction. Work is going to start on May 20th, early activities. And then um, there will be some road closures probably late July, early August. We'll make sure we notify in advance when they do the culvert work. And that'll pretty much th those closures will be occur on the weekends. We're looking at probably three to four consecutive weekends where we'll have some full closures. So we'll make sure we communicate uh, to the residents. Uh, morning drive rehab is stay route 184 from uh, Edison Highway. To just north of Chase Avenue. So uh, Griffith Construction began work on that project on April 29th, 
It opened up with a full closure uh, in front of the cemetery that's scheduled to reopen that segment uh, by May 19th. And then upcoming phases of construction um, just south of Niles Avenue are already underway, so you'll still increase work occurring once the closure is opened. Uh, Weed Patch Highway, this is another segment of State Route 184. Uh, the project is currently in design right-of-way phase, and we expect to have right-of-way um, certification this fall and be ready to advertise shortly after. And then last project, uh, Arvin cap -M project, which includes complete streets elements. Um, we should be wrapping up any day now, p &E -D or the environmental phase, and that one's targeted to be advertised in uh, late summer, early fall of, of next year. With that, that completes my update. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for District 6? I'll let you off Pop easy. Off the hook. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Board Members. Today, May 16th, and tomorrow, May 17th, the California Transportation Commission is meeting in Orange County. Uh, we have have staff there today, and I will be there tomorrow, tomorrow with our chairman to observe the meeting. There's also at least two or three items on tomorrow's agenda that are of, of interest to us. That's why I will be attending, and our chairman will be attending to sort of get the uh, get the swing of things. We are, as a reminder, we are hosting that meeting in October of this year. So please mark your calendars if you haven't yet. <coughs> Over the past month, I've, I and staff have continued to meet about uh, State Route 99 and 58 missing connectors. Um, if you caught the article in the Californian, there was a front page article about the remaining two uh, movements, the seventh and the eighth movements. Also continue to meet about 7th Standard and 43 as a uh, multi-agency effort that includes uh, private sector to um, fund a, a roundabout out there at 7th Standard and 43. The uh, safety improvements that I've spoken about on uh, State Route 33 are underway. State Route 46, just earlier this afternoon, we met about um, the progress of 4C, Michael, you mentioned um, August. That was confirmed today. I think it's uh, tentatively scheduled for the third week of, of August. Contractor is uh, anticipated to be done sometime in July, depending on um, how much production he gets out of his paving. Paving will likely start in June and be done in July. Uh, continue to meet on the truck climbing lanes on State Route 58. And staff also participates in the state right 119 stakeholder meetings. I want to personally thank Chairman Smith, um, who, along with uh, uh, Assembly Member Fong and the CTC Chairman Gardino, and I met uh, discussing our concerns over um, the Eighth Movement there at 58 and 99. We're going to follow up that meeting with a meeting with Senator Grove and the head of Caltrans that is uh, scheduled for June, and I will let you know how that goes. Subject to any questions, Mr. Chairman and board members, that concludes my report. Any questions for the director? Yes. On your discussions on the truck climbing lanes, is there any update on the right-of-way schedule for uh, purchase or obtaining the right-of-way around the Bealville area? Uh, no updates specific to the right of way, but there is good news. Uh, I think it's good news. Dis District 9 um, was not able to stay on the schedule that they initially uh, planned, and they've asked District 6 to help them, and District 6 has agreed to do it and has a, a competent team delivering. Um, I know the engineering, but they may be helping on the uh, right of way too. Michael, would you mind finding out? Exactly. I know you're for sure helping with the engineering, maybe the right of way too, but that's good, new, good news. Uh, it's appreciated, the collaboration, both districts, because that's, that's the, the boundary right there, isn't it? For, all right, thank you very much, both. Any other questions for the director? Seeing none, we will adjourn that meeting and open the Kern Council of Governments meeting. Same roll call. 
Any public comments for the current Council of Governments meeting? Seeing none, I'll move to consent agenda. Any public comments for the consent agenda? Any member want to remove an item from the consent agenda? Seeing none. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call vote, please. Couch. Yes. Crichton. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Crump. Yes. Flores. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Perez. Yes. Prout. Yes. Garcia. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. And Phil Smith. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Executive Director's Report. <coughs> Uh, good evening again, Mr. Chairman and board members. Just two quick items. I attended um, the San Joaquin Valley Policy Conference that was held at the Visalia Convention Center uh, several weeks ago. We also had uh, three staff members attend. Um, great event, and I uh, took back a lot of information about uh, event planning, believe it or not. Uh, which will be helpful for our when we host the CTC meeting. Also got to personally meet an Olympic silver medalist. He let me uh, let me hold his Olympic silver medal. That was pretty neat. It was mu much heavier, and he was a, a native of Tulare. And he's uh, you check the uh, results for uh, Tokyo Olympics, which were the 2020 Olympics, but they were actually held in 2021 heavyweight uh, boxer from Tulare. Also, um, we will be having a closed section, closed session next month for uh, my yearly evaluation. Subject to any of your uh, questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Any questions for the director? Seeing none, we are adjourned. <laughs>